Welcome to the ChemCAD NXT Essentials Tutorial. The videos in this series give an overview of the ChemCAD NXT Process Simulation Suite. This is the second video in the series, Building a Simple Flow Sheet. In this segment, we'll continue our tour of the program interface while following a demonstration of how to build and run a flow sheet in ChemCAD. So let's get started with building a simulation. The workflow in ChemCAD is based on the natural workflow for building a process simulation. This process can be summarized as follows. Open a new simulation, define the process model, specify the global engineering units, select the components, select the thermodynamic settings, assemble the process flow sheet, define the known stream information, enter the known unit operation specifications, and then run the simulation and check the results. While this sequence represents a recommended workflow, you have the flexibility to change or revisit steps as you work in simulation. Some users like to build the flow sheet first, which is fine. However, note the simulation will not run without first completing steps four and five. Once tasks one through nine are complete, you can take advantage of the other evaluation tools such as equipment sizing or analysis tools. Before we begin our simulation, let's define the process model we're going to build. In this example, we're going to model natural gas processing. We have a feed stream of 5 million standard cubic feet per day of natural gas at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're going to cool and then separate the condensing liquids in a simple vertical separator. The feed gas stream composition is given here, and we know the feed stream pressure is 200 PSIA. We're going to start by cooling the stream to negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit. When you first open ChemCAD to a new simulation, the workspace in the middle is blank. In a blank simulation, there are no defined components, no thermodynamic settings, and no flow sheet objects by default. The default settings in a new flow sheet are default engineering units and convergence settings, for example. So let's begin by checking the global engineering unit settings. Here we choose our preferred units based on how our process data is given and what we would like to see in our reports at the end, such as a stream report, for example. My data is given in English units and I want to see my gas stream as a standard volume of gas per day. It's best practice to check unit settings as a first step before entering any data, but it's not required and you're certainly welcome to come back to this menu and make any changes as needed. Next, we select the components we need. From the command ribbon, the option to select components is found in the Home tab. We can look up components by their name, such as nitrogen. Or we can search by chemical formula, like CO2. You can see that as I type, the program begins the search process, so I can search by partial names, like C2 for a quick filter and then look for ethane. So for this example, we are entering a simple natural gas with less than 10 components, but it's not unusual for users to have much longer component lists. In order to reduce the likelihood of typos or input errors, it's best practice to pay careful attention to the order you're putting the component list in because it'll appear in that order when it's time to input the stream data. Let's check the order of the provided data. Our component list begins with carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and then the hydrocarbon components in order of carbon number, C1, C2, etc. Based on this, I'll go ahead and reorder my component list so that it matches my data set. I need to highlight carbon dioxide and click up to bump it up one. I could also choose the top button to move it to the top of the list where it belongs. All right, now that matches and everything is set up for the next steps. When we click OK, the program automatically takes us to thermodynamic settings, starting with the thermodynamic suggestions pop-up. Here we can identify the expected process boundaries, and using these and the selected components, ChemCAD can recommend a suitable thermodynamic model. I know my process can require pretty low temperatures, so I'll specify negative 100 degrees for now. The others look okay, 
Actually, I know my feed pressure is 200 PSI, so I'll adjust the max pressure a little higher and see what ChemCAD recommends. When I click OK, the program automatically selected the equation of state, Peng Robinson, abbreviated as PR, based on my selections. Remember, this is only a recommendation. Clicking OK again will bring up the general thermodynamic settings menu, which is also available through the command ribbon or the explorer pane if you need to come back and make some changes later. To view the other available models, click on the drop down in the global K value field. Here you can see more options. Knowing which thermodynamic selections to choose will require some prior knowledge or research about your system. Getting the right physical behavior from a simulation will depend on the selections made here, and because there is not a one-size-fits-all model, it's a good idea to understand what settings to choose for your system. This is intended to be an introductory tutorial, so we're not going to go in-depth on all the models available in the thermodynamic settings menu. But if you're in need of guidance, please contact us at support at chemstations.com. There are many more options to choose from in the thermodynamic settings menu. But for this example, we're going to keep the recommended thermodynamic settings and click OK. If you're questioning whether the selected thermodynamic settings will work, consult the Help menu for more information. Under the Charts drop-down, we can also check the simulated phase equilibria by plotting vapor-liquid or liquid-liquid equilibrium curves. For more help on thermodynamic chart options in ChemCAD, such as using TPXY charts, check the ChemStation's YouTube video library. Now would be a good time to go ahead and save our simulation. We can go to File, Save Simulation As, and give this file a name. ChemCAD files are saved with the extension CCSIM. And now that we've saved our simulation, it appears here in the Recent Files tab of the Explorer pane. I'm also going to take a moment to point out the simulation tab in the Explorer pane, which serves as a quick list of everything we're building in a simulation. For now, we can easily access our component and thermodynamic selections, and as we build our flow sheet, streams and unit operations also appear here. Now let's start building our flow sheet. First, go to the palette. At the top of the palette is the All Unit Operations menu. But we can also find specific unit operations under the headings below. There are a few ways you can customize how unit operations appear. We can choose to have a more colorful palette by choosing System Color from the drop-down menu. To add a unit operation, we can either click and drag the icon that appears in the palette, or right-click on the icon in the palette to view other available icons. For this process, I'm going to right-click the heat exchanger and choose to display heat exchanger number 2. What does that mean? Well, for this heat exchanger and most other icons where you right-click and select your specific icon look, the same calculation options are available regardless of how you choose to display your icon on the flow sheet. The differences in this heat exchanger calculation are handled within the unit operation specifications window. Next, we're going to add our flash drum using the flash operation in the separators tab. The flash unit operation is one of the most versatile tools in our palette since it can perform several different types of flash calculations and can even represent multiple pieces of equipment if you're looking for a quick phase separation calculator, for example. For this demonstration, though, we're simply modeling a vertical separator. Finally, we're going to use product stream arrows because we need to identify inlet and outlet streams for each unit operation. Notice that each unit operation has at least one connection node. Blue dots indicate inlet connections and red dots for outlet connections. To draw a stream, move the cursor to one of the connection nodes until you see a hand with a pointed finger. Click and hold the mouse, you should see a red box appear. Now drag to the desired connection node. In this case, we're connecting the feed gas stream to the inlet of the heat exchanger, here. When you hover over the blue dot, the cursor turns into an anchor shape. Click again to complete the connection. 
To connect the heat exchanger outlet to the flash drum, find the red dot, the outlet, and connect it to the blue dot, the inlet for the flash drum. For the flash drum, the position of the inlet node is not important. The product streams, however, do depend on where they're connected. At a minimum, you need two product streams, gases at the top and liquid at the bottom. However, if there are two liquid streams expected, for example, if we have an aqueous phase in addition to a liquid hydrocarbon phase, then there could be two liquid product streams connected and the more dense phase would be expected at the bottom. We can see from the flow sheet that ChemCAD automatically numbers the streams and unit operations based on the order they were placed in the flow sheet. You can rename streams or unit operation icons by selecting the item of interest, in this case the liquid outlet from the separator, and choose Edit Name. I'll name the stream LNG to identify my liquid natural gas product. Once we click OK, we can see that the number still appears, but now the name also appears. We can edit the stream number by right-clicking and choosing a unique integer between 1 and 32,000. If I try to choose stream ID 4, I'll get a warning message that there's already a stream number 4. So note that you need to find a unique ID number. Having a unique ID number is important for the program to identify individual streams. By right-clicking and choosing text, you will have the opportunity to customize how the text appears in the flow sheet. We can also remove the stream label if we right-click on the stream and uncheck Show ID. Unit operations also have unique ID numbers and can be renamed or renumbered in the same way. Notice that the stream IDs are rectangular while unit operation IDs are oval. This helps differentiate between the numbered IDs. To move a name or ID, simply hover over the ID. The cursor will change to a hand shape. Then you can click on the ID tag and move it around. Once the unit operations are on the flow sheet, we can begin specifying the known variables. To edit the feed stream, double click on the feed line. I can name my feed stream here. For this example, we have the feed stream temperature and pressure at 77 degrees Fahrenheit and 200 PSIA, respectively. Before entering compositional and flow information, check the units and the order of the components. In this case, we need to choose mole fraction so I can copy and paste my data here. I also expect to enter my total flow of my feed gas as million standard cubic feet per day. Remember earlier in this video when we were entering the compositional data? Putting the components in the same order as our compositional data is given to us will allow us to copy and paste. Now I can simply copy paste my compositional data from, say, a report I received, like this. Let's briefly go back to the example slide. Our flow sheet now resembles our process flow diagram, and we've entered all the known information except the flow rate. Now that I've entered the known process information, I'll begin working on our operations. To open the Unit Operation Specifications window, double-click on the icon. In this case, we opened our simple heat exchanger specification window. The fields with green text indicate the minimum information needed to solve the unit operation. The window tells us we only need to specify one item. If I move this window, we can see stream 2 is the outlet of the heat exchanger. So let's set this downstream temperature to negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit, so we can get some condensing liquids in the separator. Let's double click on the flash separator icon to open the specifications window. Here we have default flash setting to use inlet temperature and pressure to run the flash calculation. There is a list of other flash calculation options we can choose from in the drop down menu. But for my process, I have a good idea about the temperature and pressure, and I'm interested in calculating the split of gas and liquid phase natural gas, so for this system, the default setting works best. 
Now that we are done with input and specification settings, it's a good time to save our work. You can do this through the file menu or find save in the quick access toolbar at the top. If you click the drop down on the right and choose more commands, you can find all your favorite commands in ChemCAD to add to the quick access toolbar. Or you can remove commands if you find it gets too cluttered. At this point, our flow sheet is all set. We've gone through steps one through eight, and now we're ready to run a simulation. There are a few options for running a simulation found in the command ribbon under the home tab, under the run heading. Right now we're running a steady state simulation and we can either choose which operations to run by selecting a single unit operation or a group of unit operations and choosing run selected. Or we can simply choose run all to run through the entire flow sheet. If this were a large complex flow sheet, it's really handy to run single unit operations or small groups of unit operations at a time to help you troubleshoot. We'll talk more about this later. But for this example, it's pretty simple, so we can just choose run all. After a run, we can see the start and finish times for the simulation and any errors or warnings will be flagged here in the messages pane. Anytime the simulation flags errors and warnings, the errors and warnings tab will be displayed with red font to draw your attention here. This was a very straightforward calculation, so we didn't get any errors or warnings. You can also look to the bottom of the status bar, which identifies that the steady state simulation was run, has finished, and converged. All looks good with the simulation run, so let's go ahead and check some results. This was our first take, so we're simply going to use the quick view tooltip, which means to hover over the item of interest, in this case our LNG stream. Well, quick view is displaying the composition in terms of mass flow, but I'm more interested in the mole percent breakdown right now, so I can change what displays here by going to the results section of the command ribbon and clicking on this gear icon to bring up the property set preferences menu. Here you can customize what will appear in the stream composition and property reports as well. We'll talk more about reports in the next video. To display my composition as mole fractions, I can go to the composition section and replace mass flow with mole fractions. Now when I hover over the LNG stream, I see the component mole fractions. This simple simulation was intended to be the first step in process simulation. It's always best to start small look at how your simulation predicts the properties of interest, and then build up to a more complex process. In the next video, we're going to build upon the simulation, adding an additional heat exchanger with a recycle loop. We're building up to this example, ChemCAD Steady State Tutorial, which is provided as an example file with every installation of ChemCAD. You can look for examples under the Examples NXT folder, which will have your version number, in this case, it says Examples NXT 1.1. Then we look under the Tutorials folder, and here it is. There is an assortment of many different kinds of example simulations, templates, and tutorials made available with every installation of ChemCAD. So if you're looking to experiment more with running different ChemCAD NXT simulations, please check out the simulation files. Or for more help getting started, Get in touch with the ChemStations representative today by visiting www.chemstations.com. That concludes our demonstration of the recommended workflow for building a simple flow sheet using ChemCAD NXT. For a deeper dive into editing process simulations, troubleshooting, and reporting the results, look for the next video in this ChemCAD NXT Essential series, Run a Simulation and Troubleshoot.